Hi, I want to make this video just to focus on how do you go about making a schedule uh, if you're given the requirements or the number of employees needed for different days of the week, okay? And uh, for this type of question, you're just interested in ensuring that your every single shift or every single day has enough employees and that every employee is given time off. And your typical uh, time off will be limited to two days, typically for most companies. Although in modern times now we have companies that give maybe three days or four days, depending on if it's something like nursing. Right? So with your uh, schedule, you typically will be presented with data that looks like this, uh, the different days of the week and the daily requirement in terms of the number of employees needed to uh, satisfy whatever type of product being offered or whatever type of service being given. Okay. So let's go ahead and answer this question, see how I would go about answering this. So the question here reads, Gable Express uh, company provides de delivery services seven days a week. The daily requirement of workers is shown below. Each worker is required to work five days a week and each must have two consecutive days off. Okay, So that means that if I give the first worker Tuesday off, then we should also give him Wednesday off or give him Monday off. The days have to be consecutive, okay? So for this, the first thing that I typically want to know is how many employees at a minimum we need to schedule. And I'll look for the largest value. And for this data here, the largest value that I see is eight. So I know that I'm going to need a total of eight employees, okay? So I'm going to schedule employees one through employee eight. And that tells me how many rows of data I'll need to put together. Okay. And let's go ahead and fill this out. Now, typically, as I'm filling this table out, I need to know what date of each employee is going to have. That's going to uh, help me determine what additional resources we need for each and every day. Okay. So looking at employee one, employee one, uh, I'll ask him this question of what two days should we give employee one as his days off, okay? And it'd be linked to which two days have the least requirement for staff, right? And for employee one, Saturday and Sunday have the lowest requirement. They only require three employees and three employees on each day, okay? So we are going to give employee one the weekend off, and that means he's going to be working Monday through Friday. Now, as soon as I do that, I'll reduce my requirements by one. So on Monday, we've already scheduled one. We need an additional seven employees. Tuesday, we had scheduled one, so we're down to a requirement for four or three additional employees. And I'll put this formula here, uh, just reducing all those numbers by one. And I can use this drag this all the way to the bottom and just fill out the table initially. I'm going to have to tweak it, but I want to fill it out completely using this very basic calculation, seven minus oh, eight minus one, and whatever the formula is, just make sure it populates your entire table, okay? Now that you've populated your entire table, whenever we schedule an employee to have some days off, we know we're still going to need the exact same number of employees for the, uh, we still have to schedule three employees uh, for Saturday, three employees for Sunday. So I'll change these numbers here to match the numbers above. Okay, so I still need three employees here and three employees here. Okay, now let's look at employee number two. And let's try and ask the question of what days should we give employee number two as days off? Let me just make this slightly bigger. Okay, so for employee number two, uh, the lowest combination is still going to be three plus three, which is six. I see four plus two, which is six. Now, if you have a tie like this one, uh, let your tie default to the whatever, if the tie is, includes a weekend, give that employee's weekend off, okay? So instead of giving employee number two, Wednesday and Thursday off, Let's go ahead and give employee number two Saturday and Sunday off. Okay. Now, because I've given 
this employee those uh, the weekend off, I will still need three employees for Saturday and still need three employees for Sunday. Okay. Their process repeats itself over eight times, right? So I repeat and ask the question of what's the lowest requirement uh, for any two consecutive days? I see two plus three is five, three plus one is four. That looks to be the lowest. So let's give employee number three the Wednesday and Thursday off. And if I do that, we still need three employees here and we need one employee, on, or extra employee on Thursday. Okay. Now for employee number four, our lowest combination, we have multiple combinations here. We can either give him Tuesday, Wednesday, or Wednesday, Thursday off, or Saturday, Sunday off. I will go with the Saturday, Sunday off because that's a weekend. Let's give him his weekend off. And because I did that, I still need two employees here and an additional two employees here. Now, for employee number five, I can either give him Tuesday, Wednesday off or Wednesday, Thursday off, because both those add up to two. So let's go ahead and give uh, employee number five Tuesday and, and Wednesday off, which means that this zero is brought down and this two comes down as well. Now, when I did that basic subtraction, I ended up with a whole bunch of negatives. Those negatives should default to zero. Just change them to zero. Any negative you have on your table, change that to a zero. It means we got enough employees for that specific day. Okay. Now, let's move on to employee number six. For employee number six, there are multiple options. Can I either have Tuesday or Wednesday off or Wednesday, Thursday off? or Thursday, Friday off, or Saturday and Sunday off. All that adds up to two. So we have a weekend combination. Let's give employee number six is Saturday and Sunday off. So we still need one employee here and one employee here, okay? Note wherever I have a color, or uh, the color green, the number below will be the same as what's in green. Okay, keep that in mind. The number below is always gonna be the same. Now we are to employee number seven. And for employee number seven, the lowest combination is either Tuesday or Wednesday, or uh, Wednesday, Thursday, or Thursday, Friday, doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and give this employee Tuesday or Wednesday off. Okay. And that brings this down to zero and one. These numbers have to match. And the last employee, employee number eight, can have uh, his or her Saturday and Sunday off as well. Okay, now once you're done with that, we now go ahead and calculate our slack. First, I need to know what's the capacity for each and every day. Then I need to know what's the requirement for each and every day. And the difference between the two will give us our measure of slack. So the capacity is just how many workers were scheduled to work every single day, okay? On Monday, I have if I don't see anybody being given time off, so we have all eight employees working. On Tuesday, we have two employees scheduled off out of eight, so there we'll have six employees coming in. On Wednesday, three employees are scheduled to have time off, so we will have five employees here. On Thursday, We'll have seven employees coming. One is on vacate on having a day off. On Friday, every single employee is coming in, all eight. Then on Saturday we have three, and on Sunday we have three. Okay, and I'll compare that with the requirement, which is what we had up here. Okay, the slack is just the difference between the capacity and the requirement. Okay. And this should then complete uh, our table, our calculation that we have here. Okay. So the total slack, which is what I'm interested in, is something that you'd have to calculate at the end of this section here. My total slack equals the sum of every single amount of slack that you have here. And for my data, my total slack is seven employees. 
that's the number of employees that we had above and beyond, beyond what we needed across the seven days. Okay. And that completes this type of question. They're all very similar and uh, shouldn't be that hard to get through. Just remember, this is a subtraction type of calculation. You start from your total requirement and you bleed your way down to making sure that every single day has enough employees. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop here.